In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The resurrection of Jesus renews the whole of creation. The Lord renews our hearts, our lives, our families, our community, the society. The whole world is renewed by the risen Lord Jesus. On this fifth Sunday of Easter, we are reminded that the resurrection gives hope that God's power is able to transform all reality. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess yes, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us give praise to the Father, Son, and Spirit in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins 
things of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord whom they had believed. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Atelia. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them. And how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. All together. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. All your work shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God, to make known your might to the children of men and the 
glorious splendor of your reign. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule endures for all generations. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts for the gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Judas had gone out from the upper room, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A 
a disciple is understood to be one who learns that is the image that comes to our mind when we hear the word disciple the disciples sitting around jesus and jesus teaching them they listening attentively and then following what he has told them a disciple listens understands learns and then implements the season of easter is a special time for those who have just received baptism at the easter vigil service or on easter sunday morning because this is a time for them to deepen their understanding of the faith to strengthen their commitment to the lord jesus whom they have surrendered their lives and the entire church accompanies these persons who have been recently baptized and as we accompany them it is also a time for us to deepen our own understanding of our faith and strengthen our commitment to the lord jesus the liturgy of today on the fifth sunday of easter gives us some insights into who a disciple is we reflect on three characteristics of a disciple firstly a disciple is one who listens and implements what he or she has heard and understood the gospel of john chapter 13 that we just heard gives us the core of christian living and yet at the same time this command of jesus probably seems to be the most difficult to put into practice love one another as i have loved you to love with the self sacrificing attitude of jesus that is what the lord asks of us and further the lord jesus seems to say this is a command that he gives to us that means we must put it into practice if we wish to call ourselves disciples but we know that love cannot be demanded love cannot be made compulsory and forced it must flow naturally it must flow freely from the depths of our hearts the command that jesus gives us presumes that the disciple first has experienced this love and the disciple therefore is able to respond to this love of jesus and love others the disciple has learnt from the feet of the master what it means to relate to god the father with love and what it means to be loving to others having experienced it then this love flows to others if not it becomes burdensome the imperative or the command or the instruction follows the indicative this is what you are and therefore this is what you are expected to be you have love you have been loved by god you are a child of god and therefore now as a consequence love one another having experienced the saving love of jesus who offers himself for us we now are to love others with that same sacrificial love a second reading from the book of revelation tells us that god dwells with his people god will now be with his people and dwell with them and in them a disciple therefore must make room for god to dwell in his or her heart to guide and direct his life this will happen when we allow god space in our lives so that he can dwell in our hearts and guide and direct us true we have so many things to do so many plans so many dreams but maybe at times all these clutter and crowd our lives when we are using our mobile phones or laptops and we have loaded so many programs and apps and data at times we get a message your phone or your laptop is slowing down you need to delete some of this remove the clutter and we follow that a similar situation may arise in our lives our lives are too crowded with so many activities with so many plans that we have to do so much of things that we wish to do maybe we don't have place for the master to dwell in our hearts as disciples we invite the lord 
to come into our hearts. And we decide to make space for him so that God can dwell with us and in us. A disciple listens, implements, and makes space for God. So then the love of God can flow from us to others. A second characteristic of a disciple is that he or she encourages and radiates enthusiasm towards others. Paul and Barnabas are examples of this. We heard of them in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We are told that they put fresh heart into the disciples. They uplift their souls. They encourage them to live as Christians. Paul and Barnabas go around preaching the good news. They established communities. They go there to see how they are faring. And then they return to encourage them. And they appoint elders, as we heard in the reading. They continue to sustain these communities by encouraging them, by filling them with enthusiasm. We know that they were guided by the Spirit. And that is what Acts of the Apostles tells us right through the chapters. Constantly the church is being guided by God's Holy Spirit. They support and motivate one another. We, as disciples, are to bring a breath of fresh air around us just as the risen Lord empowers us. We are to support and motivate others. We thank the Lord for those who have played an instrumental role in our lives, encouraging us in our personal journey, supporting us in our journey of faith. And now we in turn are to do that for other disciples. We ask for the grace to be open to the Spirit, to be ready to take risks, to move forward, to face challenges. Pope Francis is constantly reminding us of this. And syn the synodal path that he has set for the whole church is precisely a moment where we can encourage and support and enthuse one another and say, let us walk together now as disciples of the Lord. Disciples encourage and radiate enthusiasm. And the third characteristic of a disciple is that he or she hopes to reflect the glory of God. The book of Revelation describes the new Jerusalem like a bride. The church now has to reflect the glory of God through its call to holiness, through its ministry, through all its activities, through the people and every person, every member of the church. The glory of God must shine forth. God has saved us from sin. He has now called us to be his children and we continue to experience that saving action through the church, through the sacraments, through the scriptures that are proclaimed, through every moment when we gather together as disciples to worship the Lord. We are being renewed in the Lord's love. The Lord lo Lord's love lifts us up and strengthens us. Disciples therefore are called to shine with the grace of God, to reflect that glory in all that they do. We must become more and more convinced that evil will not triumph, that we will not succumb to evil in our personal lives, that we will not and society will not be overwhelmed by evil. Even though as we look around, we see so many negative signs, our hope in the risen Lord fills us and assures us and invites us to look up to the glory that God wishes to shine forth on us. The power of the risen Lord transforms all limitations and we experience his saving action. Let us thank God for what he does in our lives and for the moments when in some small way we have reflected the glory of the risen Jesus. God is making a new heaven and a new earth, not just in the future, but already now, here at this moment, in this place. Behold, I make all things new. God is faithful to his words. As we participate in this Eucharist, let us make space for the Lord in our lives so that we will love as he has loved us. Let us enthuse and encourage others. And may we hope that we will always reflect the glory of God.
Let us now profess our faith in God, the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, Lord, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Lord, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, Lord, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful let us present to the Lord our petitions as we pray for ourselves, for our loved ones, for society and the world, trusting that the power of the risen Lord renews and transforms our lives and all of reality. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer together. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, the bishops and those with responsibilities in the church, that they may inspire the whole church to be the new Jerusalem and eagerly prepare to meet Christ, the bridegroom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nations, that the plans of their hearts may be according to God's will, and that violence and war in various parts of the world and especially in Ukraine, may come to an end. We pray that peace and cooperation may be established. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For lay leaders and evangelizers, that they may strengthen the hearts of disciples and help them to persevere in the faith despite hardships. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us, that as disciples we may radiate the love of Jesus to all whom we encounter, following Jesus' example of selfless love. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are suffering from sickness, anxiety, poverty, or grief, that the Lord, who is gracious and merciful, may show them his kindness and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our own personal intentions and for those who have asked us to remember them in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers that we have placed before you in deep faith. By the power of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you renew the world and you fill us with hope of establishing the new heaven and a new earth by your power. Hear these prayers that we have placed through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray O Lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Oswald our bishop the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you In your compassion O merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen, amen. at the savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our, our father, father who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the, for kingdom, the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now Amen. and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace lamb, lamb of god, god you take away, away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you, that should, you should enter under, under my roof. roof. But only, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I wish all of you a joyful Sunday, a day of growing in the Lord's love, of strengthening the bond of relationship and of experiencing the transforming power of the Lord in your lives. Happy Sunday to all of you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Just like the lamb, he was there.